Hey guys, it's Francis Check with Video Rail Media, and today I am bringing you a long-awaited tutorial. This is my tune shading tutorial right inside of Element 3D. I know it's been a really long time since I've made a tutorial, but I figured better late than never, so here we go. So for the first example, as you can see here with these two spheres, you can see this gradient on the light on the PBR shader, and almost no gradient on this tune shader. And this really gives it that very tune-like feel inside of Element. And there's a lot of other 3D programs out there, uh, Cinema 4D, Blender, 3ds Max, and Maya. Almost every program is able to do cell shading. But I wanted to see if I could accomplish the same results, or at least get close, right inside of After Effects using Element. So let's go ahead and check out the settings right here. All right, so we're in Element right now, and we have these two objects right here. And we're going to go and reset one, and we'll just use one of these for our example. So we're going to go and reset this one. Reset. And now we're left with the base material that Element 3D usually starts with. One of the drawbacks of this little trick that I figured out is that you cannot use physical shaders. You have to switch this to a standard shader. And now Basically what that means is that it will not be using environment maps to light your model But if you're gonna be going for an unrealistic look anyways, that's not too much of a problem Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to want to do to set up this material is we're gonna shut off our diffuse all the way And now you may not be able to see anything we can lighten up our background just a little bit so we can see what we're working with here and if we take a look here in these settings down here we can adjust our specular highlight and some of the most important ones down here, the specular shininess and the specular sharpness. And if we just adjust these a little bit, you'll kind of see what that's starting to do for us. So we can now see that we have that sort of hard edge on here. And for other models, you may notice that it has sort of this gradient that starts to show up again. But just by tweaking these settings, you should be able to remove that mostly. Turn that up, there we go. We just do it right on the edge. So now if we move that around, we have a nice hard edge on our specular highlight. But you're probably wondering, uh, how do we actually add color to this now that we've shut off our diffuse texture? Because if we try to adjust it right now, we're not gonna see any results at all. And this is also another trick. So we have to go down to our illumination map and we can turn this up however high we want. Normally I don't keep it too high. Maybe we'll just turn it up to like I don't know, maybe 15%. And we're gonna use the diffuse texture. And this comes in real handy, because now if we go up to the top, go to our diffuse texture, now we can adjust that and put it right where we want it. So we can go for more of like a blue color, any color we'd want to. We could just do it like this. And now we can see that we have that specular highlight on there. We have sort of a tune shade. So this is a very basic example. This is just how you set up these materials and you can also go in here and adjust the size of this just by tweaking very few settings like if you want a very shiny material but usually in tunes unless you're doing glass you don't ever want that specular highlight to be too small. So in my experience just leaving it like this has worked pretty well. So let's go ahead and move on to some other examples. All right, so in this example that you saw in the very beginning of the tutorial, um, you can see the PBR shading on the right-hand side and the tune shading on the left. And you can really see the difference, especially in the face if we get closer here. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. You can really see how those edges really show up on his hat and everything else. It just looks great. It looks more of a stylized render. So let me go ahead and jump in into this render right here. We'll take a look at these settings real quick. All right, so here's the model inside Element. Uh, a lot of people were asking me also how I created this black outline that's running real time inside Element. It updates when you rotate. And it's actually fairly simple. Um, all I did was duplicate the model and then invert the normals. So basically, the other model was rendering in back of this one constantly. Even if I rotated it, went up or down, it was always in the background. So if I move this model out, you can see it's an exact copy of the other model, except when I move it back in, you can kind of see even if I'm doing this, it's sort of not uh, obstructing the model in any way. And basically how that's possible is if you invert those normals, 
Let me go ahead and shut this off and you can kind of see the example. If we bring these colors back up to sort of a white, and then we move our lighting around, we can almost kind of see inside of that model. So you can kind of see that now. So that's what's happening when you invert the normals inside of Element 3D. And that option is under the model settings. So if we move this back down to black right here, then we turn on our other model, then we can see how that's actually rendering. It's all real time, no wait. And it was just scaled up just a tiny bit. Because if we scale up too much, then it won't look right. It has to be the same exact scale, just a little bit more. And it gives that illusion of a black line being rendered on your character, just like you will see in some tune renders. All right, so our next scene here is some anime sunset. Um, I did my best trying to recreate it. I mean, it's almost impossible in 3D, but I think it came pretty close, especially inside of Element. So this model was a little bit more complex to set up just because there were so many materials in here. Um, and as you can see, this is where it won't work as well as when you have these really uh, curved shapes. Um, you can't really see it now, but I mean, if you light it at the certain angle, like even from the back, it'll work. Um, or if you kind of rotate it here, you can kind of place it somewhere where it'd be more on the edge. You're just a little bit on like the nose. Like it does look all right, um, especially just running straight out of element. Um, so the scene came out pretty well. Um, I did the same thing for all the other assets actually. So we go back into our scene setup. You can really see how just using that tune shader on all of our different models. So like even the grass, this is comes with element. This is the grass patch, but you can see how it's has the same tune shading. And I just left the diffuse texture on there and took off all the bump maps specular maps just left it plain color and we can see the same thing on this telephone pole right here it has that same hard lighting on it and I was actually surprised that this one worked but because it was a very just flat shapes on most of this I think that's why it turned out so well so we take a look at this uh, the whole scene came out great um, this texture was just an environment map that I used in the background and uh, yeah it came out looking really nice Okay, so here's the other render. I just kind of changed a few things on the hair color just to see how maybe doing that would help. And here's a quick tip. Whenever you're working with these models, almost never change the specular highlights. Um, at least you don't want to change it too much from the original color. So if you were doing like, this is a good example right here. So if you look at this sort of bandana scarf, whatever this is, um, you can see that it's red and the speculars are also red, but that's just one of those examples because like you want to keep the colors the same. So this wouldn't be like a red texture with like a blue specular. And that's all inside of the scene setup when you're setting up these materials. So the one thing that you want to make sure on is if we go back into here you can kind of see how that's working. If we click on this bandana right here, you can see down here in my settings, I'd set the diffuse color, which is this color right here. Um, is this so this is what's controlling that and we don't want to oversaturate it or anything like that Because um, we're going to color grade it later and then our specular color is also red um, But see turning it white wouldn't really make sense. So you kind of want to keep the colors the same um, For most of these if especially if you're doing a cartoon unless it is a shiny material um, Then you would want to keep that texture with a white specular highlight all right, and here is our next example. Uh, this is an alien head that I modeled. And you can kind of see how they have all this stuff in the background. This thing flies in all distorted. And this is really where tune shading, it's not really limited to just cartoons. Like you can make some really neat stylized intros, logos, graphics. It really extends beyond just cartoons here. You can really play with this. Um, what I added was just some chromatic aberration to really make the edges pop around. So if we shut this off, we can kind of see what we're left with. So we have this right here. And if we shut off our element layer here. So the base layer looked something like this. All right, and we've taken a look at the base model without any of the color correction. We can really see what's going on here. So for the distortion, what I did 
is I just use the built-in deform properties inside of Element. So uh, we can really just bend this thing around. Um, we can bend the direction. Um, we have all these different settings. So if we go back in time, we can go into our twist settings. And I mean, we could really twist this in any direction that we would want. So if we use the x-axis, we would have this really weird warp. Um, so that's how I was accomplished, that sort of animation of this kind of animating in to the center. This model just worked really well for this sort of tune lighting. Um, I do have little specular highlights on his eyes, as you can see right here. It's a little strange on some of them, but it looks great overall. And you can see how we light this. You can really bring out some of those details in his face. If we uh, reset this, we can kind of see what the normal model looks like right here. And uh, overall, it was just a perfect example of this. Um, so if I wanted to, I could go in and I could adjust some of these other colors so we could really stylize this to be really out there. This is where we could just kind of get crazy with this. Um, we gotta get this these 3D colors going on here. And um, it just does look amazing when you start playing with the colors. There's no limitations on this. I think it's just one of those things you have to play with and just figure out what works best for the model. Um, but in this case, um, it just turned out well for this one. And another question that I got was, how did I make this background um, that's just sort of really, really abstract? And it was actually really easy to create. If I jump into this composition over here, um, you can kind of see how wild this is. <laughs> so it's basically a bunch of cubes and they kind of morph into this weird, uh, they kind of mash together and mix and turns into this sort of liquid simulation here. Um, but it was really easy. Uh, basically, if I shut off all of the different little distortion here, we'll turn off all these. We'll just kind of play this through. So it was just a bunch of cubes and they just sort of animate and then they just scale down towards the end. So the first thing I applied for this was the vector blur, which just helped blend them a little better towards the end. And obviously we have the turbulent displacement, which really animates keyframes from 0%. And then starting right about here, it starts getting real, real high. So that's just changing our amount right here. So we can kind of see what that's doing for us. It's really, really mixes that together. Looks great though. Also, um, if you're wondering how this was made, how all these cubes are made, uh, basically that was just using Elements Particle Replicator. So inside of element there's only one cube and then it replicated that so we also have our cell shading on this you can kind of see how it's only lighting about a face at a time and then we would just replicate that using the particle replicator settings in here i just put 30 by 30 by 9 and you can see how it just really <laughs> it's just just this big massive uh, background and this is just one of those things where you can just get kind of uh, kind of crazy with it. And if we kind of play this back now, you can kind of see where that was before. So it just kind of mixes together, especially with that chromatic aberration. Really looks great. All right, and for our last example here, I have this little trophy here rendered with the tune shading. And I also have one here with the image-based lighting inside of Element 3D. So it's just kind of rotating, and you can really see how drastic of a change that is for this. So we have this one right here. Same colors, same everything, it's just the lighting that's changing in this. So you can really see how, if we kind of shut this off, we can even move our camera around and that lighting will react to this. So we can kind of just spin around. Everything looks great. We're not going to have any sort of weird issues around edges or anything. It just looks great overall. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions like that, just leave it down in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you. You can contact me on Twitter or on Facebook or even here on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out our website, videorealmmedia.net. We have two model packs on there, Fractal Realm and Locust Pack. And it's basically for creating some really epic scenes right inside of Element 3D. We have some testimonies from some well-known people out there in the After Effects community. And they love it, and I'm confident that you will as well. Uh, we have a bunch of different planets and rock debris. And you can basically create some very 
volumetric looking effects right inside of Element. It's pretty amazing. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,